Hey, hey, what's going on, man? Brand new episode of the Foul Pole to Foul Pole podcast brought to you by our friends over at the Carolina Patriot Collegiate League. If you haven't had a chance to check them out yet, man, check it out. It's cpatriotcl.com. Brand new summer softball league coming to the Carolinas during the months of June and July. We're going to have incoming college freshmen looking to get their feet wet in the college game. You've got kids in the transfer portal looking for a new home. Then you've got other ones that are just looking to stay sharp. There's a lot going on. Go check it out. CPatriotCL.com. You can register or fans, you can stay up to date with all the information. This episode is brought to you by our friends over at the Nexus Mount. Our turnkey kits provide a secure and hassle-free way to attach multiple devices to any fence, net, or tripod. Crafted from lightweight aluminum with a powder-coated finish, our mounts are built to last. But that's not all. Our innovative design features a removable shade cover to protect your devices from direct sunlight during your outdoor streaming events, which will minimize the risk of overheating. Don't settle for anything less than perfection. Unleash the full potential of your streaming experience with the Nexus Mount. Visit us today at thenexusmount.com and elevate your game. All right. Today is Wednesday, March 27th, and we are continuing our week of legends, our legendary week. Um, we're going to get into the coaches today, and there have been some incredible coaches across the board in all the NCAA levels, junior college, just a lot of coaches have impacted the game in, in such a way that has, has made this game so great, and it just continues to help the, the game grow, not just here in the States, but internationally, because you know we know that the, the college level of softball has always been sort of the, the pinnacle uh, when it comes uh, to the softball game, I know there is international play and there there is, you know, the national team and the Olympics and stuff. But as far as um, what catches the eye and what is the most popular amongst the fans has always been that college game, just the, the college atmosphere that goes with it. And as the game continues to grow, uh, both professionally and internationally, uh, hopefully one day um, the professional game will be just as popular as the collegiate game. I mean, we all know that the uh, the high school and the, and the travel ball is is really popular as well. Um, you know, we're out there. It seems like almost uh, every week, every weekend, um, with our kids it, within the softball community, uh, watching the game, being a part of it, whether we're coaching or we're mentoring or our athletes are playing. I mean, softball is great. And if we didn't have some of these great coaches to sort of look up to and say, like, man, wow, um, how great is Carol Hutchins? How great is, you know, Donna Papa? All these these names that pop up. So today I sort of wanted to celebrate them and talk about some of their records and, 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 and their tenure. We're not going to get into every little um, accolade that they have. They, they all have some great accolades. They all are fierce competitors, but there's also this sort of camaraderie uh, amongst the coaches. Um, and, and that's what's, what's awesome about it. Um, if you look at uh, sort of the top, if we go by just wins and, and we sort of just rank them on wins, um, you know, and that's sort of how I've kind of put this list together. Uh, at the top of the list, you look at Carol Hutchins and where she, she used to coach um, at Michigan. And before Michigan, she was at Fair State in 1982. She took over the job at Michigan back in 1985 and, um, not too long ago, retired from from coaching back in uh, 2022 at, at Michigan. Uh, but 1,707 wins up against 551 losses. I mean, a winning percentage of .755 is incredible. To do it at the Division One level, uh, to be uh, around the softball program uh, for that long, to be in the game for that long is just incredible. It, it speaks to... Uh, who Coach Carroll is as a as a as a human, as a person, as a mentor, as a coach. It's just an incredible pioneer for the sport. Uh, she is awesome. Uh, so she has the most wins in uh, NCAA history. Right behind her is Coach Mike Condrea, and many will will say that Coach Condrea is the number one coach of all time. Um, a lot of people. I mean, he was in Arizona from '86 to 2003. Came back 2005 to 2007. And then again, and from 2009 uh, to 2021 and uh, retired, he retired with 1,674 wins up against 436 losses, almost an 80% winning percentage. You're at 79.3% uh, winning percentage. That's 34 years of coaching at the highest level uh, at one school. Now, granted, there are some breaks um, in his tenure there, but all at Arizona, um, the, the impact that he's had on the, the international level 
um, with the national teams and stuff like that. It's just it just speaks to um, how well um, he is is liked, how well um, people admire him uh, just as a coach, as a mentor. And you talk to the ladies that have, have played for him, talk to the coaches that have coached under him, just a, um, a very had a huge impact on the game. Uh, number three, uh, as far as wins is concerned, is Coach Patty Gasso. We all know she's uh, been in Oklahoma since 1995, has put together an incredible program. Um, these The last decade uh, for uh, Oklahoma Sooners has been incredible. Uh, as of you know coming in now, she's at 1,458 wins up against 345 losses. She's almost at an 81%. <clears throat> winning uh percentage and that's that is crazy um just the the program that she has built um you look at the players that she has had along the way the people clamoring to get to oklahoma to watch a game um all the athletes you you look at the ones that have 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 played for her and gone on and, and, and done great things uh lauren chamberlain comes to mind with the wpf just uh incredible ball players incredible human beings that she has you know, been able to tutor and mentor the coaches, the coaching tree that she has. You look at her son is now the, uh, the associate head coach there. Um, she's got another coach that also coaches the NC or another son that coaches in the NCAA, just an incredible run for her. Um, you know, how long does she do it? How long does she stay in the game? Who knows? Um, you know, she's, she's right around 250 wins away from the all time record. Uh, she's just over 200 wins away from catching uh, coach Mike Condrea. Just an incredible, inspiring uh, human. If you ever get a chance to hear her speak or talk, um, she's just inspiring. And it makes all coaches want to be better. Number four on the list is uh, Margie Wright. She coached at Illinois State from 80 to 85, then Fresno State from 86 to uh, 2012. Uh, Incredible coach. I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, She got to 1,457 wins against 542 losses. Right there to 73% winning uh, record. It just, again, incredible tenure. That's that's one thing, man. 33 years uh, for Margie. Just, I don't know anybody that would say, hey, you know what? Uh, she didn't put Fresno State on the map. You look at what Fresno State has done uh, over the years since her her being involved with the program. Um, you don't you don't get to where she's gone and doing her thing um, by just, you know, falling into a, falling into a spot. Um, just if you go back and if you check her accolades and check out what she's done throughout the years, um, every year it seems like she was in the regionals. Every year. You go back to uh, winning it in 99, and even after that, from 2000 all the way to 2011, uh, at least getting to uh, the, the NCAA regionals. That I mean, that's a long run of just being at the top of the game, being the top of the heat um, for as long as she has been. Uh, you got Ralph Weekly coming in at number five as far as wins are concerned, 1,452 against 481 wins or 481 losses, a 75% win ratio. Back in 86, was hired on at Pacific Lutheran, then went on to Chattanooga in 95, was there from 95 to 98, came back in 2001. And then went on to Tennessee from 2002 to 2021. Uh, Ralph Weekly is synonymous when it comes to Tennessee softball. Just an incredible run. And again, we talked about Margie. Let's let's take out Coach Weekly here. Um, just an incredible run back when he took over 2002. Um, trying to get think the ball rolling the right way for Tennessee. By the time 2004 rolls around, he gets the, play, the, the the pieces in place, gets the coaches in place, and then just goes on a run when it we talk about getting to that postseason play. Uh, from 2004 all the way to 2021 in a regional. Um, it just – how long they have been in the postseason play. Um, the wins started to rack up. You're getting 67 wins in 2005, 63 wins in 2007. Just – as far as the SEC ball is concerned, when you think about SEC ball, you think about Tennessee during Ralph Weekly's tenure. Uh, if we go through the list a little bit, you've got some coaches that, um, like Adana Papa with 1,368 wins, Coach Lori Meyer with 1,366, and all those wins are at Minnesota State uh, from 1985 until the present. 
You got Lori Meyer still coaching at Minnesota State. Um, you know, people like Gary Bryce at Wayne State from 82 to 2001 has 1,340 wins, a 63% winning percentage. And then there's so many names that are above that 1,000 win mark. And that just goes to the tenure. I mean, you're talking 25 to, to almost 40 years of coaching. Some coaches have 40 years of coaching. You got uh, Margie or Margot Jonker that has 40 years at Central Michigan, you know, with almost 1,300 wins. You've got Gary Bryce, 40 years of coaching. Uh, Donna Papa, 40 years. There's a lot of coaches that have been there doing this thing for a long time. I'm not even 40 years old yet. I, I turned 40 here uh, in July. And some of these coaches have been coaching longer than I've been alive and been impacting people, impacting the game, growing the game. And these are the legends that I talk about. These are the ones that like I look up to. And no, I haven't met them, um, but it's just inspiring to, to you know, read their books if they're authors, listen to their press conferences after games, um, listen to them talk about inspiring, being keynote speakers. And just these are the ones that we need to look up to and try to be like. And I know there's a bunch of us out there that are either in the high school game or the tribal game or maybe coaching the JUCO level or, or, or wherever. These are the coaches that have been uh, where we've been um, at some point. They got their start some way, somehow. Maybe they were players. Uh, maybe they were grad assistants. Maybe they were d- just athletes somehow, some way, and got involved in the game. And, and that's what softball does. And this week, as we're talking about legends and, and that kind of stuff, man, a legend can be anything, anything that's inspiring to anybody. Um, but for me, you, you know, Coach Mike Condrea, just the way he – he is so loved by his former players and coaches the way Patty Gasso is looked up to by um, just her counterparts that, you know, have nothing mean to say. Um, You got somebody like, you know, Patrick Murphy that is so inspiring. I mean, with the the phrase Mudita that he has in the dugout, Um, you know, he starts in uh, Northwest Missouri state in 95 and then takes over the job at Alabama in 99 and, and is still coaching. He's almost at 1,300 wins 26 years later. So I'm sure when he took that spot at Northwest Missouri, uh, he didn't know where it was going to go. But he kept doing what he's supposed to do, kept inspiring, kept growing as a coach, um, kept mentoring. And lo and behold, there you go. I mean, he's been now 25 years (laughs) at at Alabama since 99. So – it, it's an it's an incredible run. You look at some of these smaller schools that uh, aren't necessarily a D one schools. Some of them are. Uh, you look at uh, Judy Laws from Cutstow from eighty eight to the present, over a thousand wins, thirty six years. You got USC Upstate, Co- uh, Chris Hawkins, a thousand wins, twenty nine years doing it. You know you got uh, Lewis, uh, Chris uh, DiMatteo from Lewis. 1984 to 2014, a thousand wins, 31 seasons of coaching. It's just, it's it's incredible to me. Um, Florida Atlantic, Joan Joyce, back from uh, 95 to uh, 2022. We all know Joan Joyce is an absolute legend when it comes to the game. Her playing career, uh, her coaching career, she's just she's she's incredible. And then I, I'm sure that there's people that don't don't even really you know recognize. That after she was done with softball, uh, she joined the LPGA Tour. Uh, she was there from 77 to 94. She finished sixth place in some tournaments back in the uh, the early 80s and holds the lowest number of putts, 17, in a single round of LPGA. That's that's another, just an accolade. She played volleyball. She played basketball. She's been inducted to multiple Hall of Fames. The, the National Softball Hall of Fame, uh, that's like the, the pinnacle. And, and also the the ISF, the International Softball Federation Hall of Fame. So we've got so many legends we can look up to and, and can be inspired by. It's just it's just cool for me to, to sit back and, and take a look at, man, one of these days could I be there? You know, you got uh, Les Studeman. It's been at um, Alabama Huntsville since 96, 28 years. It's almost got 1,300, 1,300 wins. You know, Joanne Graff back in uh, Florida State in 84 to 2008, almost 1,200 wins. So these coaches that you see, like, man, they've been coaching for forever, this and that. Well, there's a reason that they coach for forever. They, it's not just – it's literally – it's not just about wins and losses uh, when it comes to two sports. I mean, you, you have to win enough to keep your job, but you've also got to be turning out, you know, great human beings. You know, you got to keep that 
graduation rate, you know, it's got to be up. You know, you, you can't go in there, um, not be able to produce great people, great students, great athletes, and continue to have your job. I mean, you have to, you got to keep producing. You got to be inspiring. You got to, you know, help them in the classroom. Uh, you got to bring in the right people. You, you've you got to make the university look better. You got to make the university money. You know, and college softball doesn't make a whole bunch of money for, for the university. So at the end of the day, you got to make sure you're not losing money. You got to be doing your job. And uh, right now, I think if you're looking at it from active coaches, Patty Gasso is doing it right. I mean, if, if you tried to model your coaching style after someone, I mean, you got to go with someone like Patty Gasso, uh, Mike Condrea, Donna Papa, uh, Joe Evans. There's, I don't know. It's just for me, um, where I'm at in, in my my coaching career, um, you know, like I said, I'm almost 40. I don't see myself ever getting into the, the, the coaching game at that level, not even at the high school level. Um, but just to be inspired and sort of help guide these young athletes in the direction of those coaches is, is what, you know, wakes me up every day. Completely inspired. And a list like this just shows, man, there are some great human beings in this world. And I love this small community that we have in, in the, just in softball. Um, you know, youth athletes, there's a bunch of them. And then as you start breaking down sport to sport, you get softball. And it's not the biggest, you know, community out there. But, man, we are a fierce com- community. Um, softball is a, is a fun sport. It's a growing sport. I can't wait to see what the next five or ten years has to offer. So that's going to wrap it up for today. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to be talking about some of the best hitters that uh, the sport has ever seen. And not just home runs. We're talking about some of the best batting averages of all time. Um, we're going to look at the offensive side of the game. We did uh, pitching. Uh, so tomorrow we're going to jump in um, and talk about that a little bit. And then Friday, um, we're going to be bringing on uh, Kirsten Roos from Coastal from Coastal Carolina here right down the road from him. Uh, she's been battling uh, an injury, had some surgery, had to take uh, some time off. Uh, so we're going to get have her on. We're going to get her take on some of the legends, and then we're going to qu- sort of wrap up um, Legends Week, and then um, we'll get into uh, our regular uh, podcasting the following week there. Uh, spring break around here coming up um, here pretty soon next week. Kids will be out of school, so that'll be fun. Have a couple special guests on for that um, for that week. We're going to talk to some high school athletes and kind of get their take on um, what they do, what they're dealing with in the classroom, what it's like to be a, a student athlete today. So we're going to have a couple of special guests on for that. Looking good uh, for the next couple of weeks as, uh, as far as our scheduling. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you know someone who wants to check this podcast out or just likes to listen to podcasts and haven't found it yet, make sure you share it. And as always, if you share it with a friend, be sure you tell them you love them.